Hello! Great Canadian Bagel here, coming to you with another Canadian federal election update. So, <clears throat> the big... There's, there's two main things I want to touch on today here. So the first one, because there's been many people in the past and still present, who occasionally bring stuff up, and I want to really stress here. There's nothing wrong with people bringing this up. I just want to address it in a proper format like this so everyone who does bring this up has a actual, appropriate, well-thought-out response instead of me having a Twitter response or a comment response on YouTube, which are generally not as good. So, <clears throat> what I'm speaking of here is people often... Especially in Canada, because 338 exists. Compare my model to 338 or other models. And we're like, 338 has these seats going to this party. Either doesn't matter to be any different party. And the thing that needs to really be an important note here, and this you can follow through this with any other model. If you look at Too Close to Call, when he... When Brian eventually updates his model for Canada, which probably will be a while. You look at anyone else you might want to name or who does this kind of stuff. Every model is going to be different. So, if I were just to describe the, myself in 338, because 338 is the big, the big boy in town, if you will. 338 is a much swingier model. It's much more sensitive to changes in the polling average. So newer polls are more, it's more sensitive to new polls. If you compare the 22nd of January's update to today's update of 338, you are looking in the realm of uh, like a per two percentage point swing in the popular vote lead, about 20 seat swing in about a week. There's nothing wrong with what he's done. It's just what his model does. It is swingier. It uh, moves faster. My model is very sticky. It moves very slowly. It doesn't really change that heavily, which is why I, whereas 338 is roughly doing an up, a proper update on his website ever every week or so, I only do a proper release maybe about once a month right now because there's just not much changing. And even in this particular case, not that much has changed. If we compare this to this map from December 18th, you'll notice here in the top right corner here, popular vote and seat total changes are very similar. Now, different seats have changed. Different areas have changed. More seats have flipped than actually the six that are indicated here. The net change is six seats. There's been a net of six seat change, I should say. But <clears throat> more seats have changed than that. It's just that that's the net. But there is a, a difference between how these two models interact. And the important distinction here between my model, between 338's model, between Too Close to Call's model, or any other group or person who's doing this, is it's not the individual model <clears throat> that is sacrosanct. 338's projection isn't gospel. He's good, but it's not gospel. My projection isn't gospel. I like to consider I'm good, but... What they take that for what you will. I am talking about myself, so obviously I'm going to be biased. The distinction here, and the important thing here, is that my model and 338s, assuming both of us are good, should be within margin of error of each other. And we have been. Most seats that are competitive, we both say they're competitive. Margins might vary a little bit, but we both recognize they're both competitive seats. There is a certain amount of luck to what we do. There's a certain amount of unpredictability, which is possibly where the luck comes in. Because if we go to the 
Ontario 2022 election, the riding of Timmins went extremely blue. That's a very difficult one to predict because I was forecasting it going progressive conservative, but the degree it goes is a lot harder to forecast than it might seem because things like that are heavily candidate driven, heavily local driven. Unless you are from that area, it's going to be really hard to see this. <clears throat> Another uh, national Canadian example, the writing right here of South Shore St. Margaret's 2019 was firmly liberal. In fact, I'll just bring up the numbers over here. Uh, bear with, with me. Okay, I've returned. So in uh, 2019, South Shore St. Margaret's was a plus 13 margin. You compare this to Sydney, Victoria. Once again, I'm going to... Okay, sorry about that. Cuts are coming in. Wow. Um, so, comparing this to Sydney, Victoria in 2019, the Liberals only won by a three-point margin. And that three-point margin actually carried into 2021, in case anyone was curious. But conversely, South Shore St. Margaret's, with the two... Candidates being the same, Rick Perkins and Bernadette Jordan were both the liberal, or Rick Perkins was the conservative candidate in both elections, and Bernadette Jordan was the liberal candidate in both elections. We saw a wild change in result. Going from liberal plus 13, actually closing edging on liberal plus 14, to liberal, or to conservative plus 4. Well, why? On this surface, that's not an easy one to forecast. There's all sorts of reasons why this, you could argue this could have happened, but, or you might be able to see this in the forecasting, but any of that is more of a coincidence. What happens there, which caused this writing to so heavily flip, I'm not sure how well this disseminated to the rest of Canada, but in Nova Scotia, there was a bunch of protests about lobster fishery in the South Shore, where a lot of the lobster fishers are, fishermen are, about uh, Mi'kmaq fishermen fishing in spawning season. Bernadette Jordan is the fisheries minister. Uh, not once during the entire issue of the protest duration did she come to her own writing as her M as the mp or as function of the fisheries minister to try to resolve this dispute something that is a federal jurisdiction dispute because it's about treaty rights with the Mi'kmaq which is a federal issue federal jurisdiction so the Incumbent MP and cabinet minister of the jurisdiction of the problem never went to her own riding or the neighboring riding of West Nova, which had the similar problem, similar issue going on, to deal with it. Instead, she called the lobster fishermen racist for being upset. That the Mi'kmaq, some, some Mi'kmaq, not even all of them, some Mi'kmaq were fishing in the spawning season. Which I, I feel like I shouldn't need to be explained, but that's not a good plan. Because it's going to kill, the catch the lobsters when they are breeding. It's not when you want to fish. Anyways, this is the reason why she lost in 2021. It has nothing to do with O'Toole, nothing to do with Rick Perkins, nothing to do with the national campaign or changes in platform or anything. What happened there is people who were content to vote for her flipped. She lost about 3,000 votes, notably. And a lot of other voters who probably didn't vote before turned out to vote for Rick Perkins because they were upset about this. Probably lots of lobster fishermen who didn't vote 
because this writing only has a turnout about 63%, so you would assume a lot of people don't vote. It drived turnout of the demographic that doesn't like Bernadette Jordan, and she lost. Now, this is not an unforecastable writing, but it's this is an example that national polling doesn't always get individual writings very well. Because certain things happen with incumbents in the writing. Or you can get certain superstar candidates going. Another example of this kind of thing is uh, Milton here. Lisa Ria was incumbent cabinet minister. I think she was the deputy PM, but I'm not 100% certain. And then the liberals recruited a really famous and I seemingly successful MP in 2019, Adam Vancouver Den. I think he was an Olympic gold medalist in something. And he went in a writing like Milton, which should be a tilt conservative writing based on demographics, and absolutely blew Lisa Riot out of the water. In a writing that should be a tilt conservative writing. Just based on demographics. And now it's solidly liberal right now. Well, he's the incumbent. I venture that as soon as he retires, it will go back to being tilt conservative. Probably... Might, might possibly even lean conservative because the rest of Oakville area right here is tilt conservative. The liberals are currently winning it, but that's more of an incumbent. They have the incumbent and uh, the conservatives are still not actually winning in Ontario. Just on that note, I will bring up provincial numbers here. So, te okay, technically they are winning in Ontario. That's by point two, but we're... <laughs> The Liberals haven't really lost any voters in Ontario, and the Conservatives are gaining some, but where the Conservatives are gaining voters is, like, Northern Ontario, places like Essex and London, Niagara, Kitchener, Guelph, Hamilton, but it's not really shown up, showing up yet in Hamilton area. So there is gains, but they're not being gains in GTA area yet. If the Liberals keep losing ground, that should should carry forward but overall here this is kind of where we're looking at numbers wise in the last month actually there's been a big gain in Atlantic Canada though this might be partially um, overstating it because of the last ledger poll might have been anomalous in Atlantic Canada but we will see it's not the only reason why I included that Atlantic data is the app was it the abacus I think it was the abacus data was the nanos data for sure is within margin of error of that. And I think the abacus data was to, because keep in mind here, no, yeah, ab, abacus was to, because keep in mind when you're talking about an 80 person sample, the margin of error is like plus or minus 10 or something. So it's a very small overlap, but the composite intervals do overlap slightly. And it's not wildly impossible. Whereas sometimes I might discard ones that are like Saskatchewan being like 20% conservative. Or there was an Ecos poll, I think it was 30%. It's like, that's not happening. Sorry. <laughs> Saskatchewan's only voting more right wing as time goes on. There's not really any good reason why they would just suddenly flip. Whereas there is a potential reason why Atlantic Canada might flip compared to 2019 or 2021 is Polly is a different leader who's doing different things and people are more tired of Trudeau. So there is reasons why that might happen. There's really no reason why Saskatchewan might flip. So there's, there's some things on this, but I do, do definitely caution this. Though it's not like it's really affected the projection much at all. The other thing I want to talk about here, touch on here, is 
there's for the last two months or so been constant bubbling about the potential of an election this year now I'll get into whether I think this is even likely in a moment, but to just do an overall touch on this, there is just about two times that I could possibly see an election happening. And the first one is much more likely. So the first one would be early spring. <clears throat> Specifically, I would hazard to say slightly before or slightly after the Alberta provincial election. And it would be basically the the regular shtick where the Liberals table a budget that's really, the Liberal base loves, the NDP can't support it, causes a non-confidence vote. That kind of shtick. Or possibly the alternative one where the Liberals just table a really favorable budget and then launch a campaign off it. Kind of like what to a similar degree, what it looks like Smith is going to do this year and what Ford did last year. <clears throat> the reason why it might be before is... <clears throat> um, what's the word for it? Trudeau might think Smith being in the open, like, sorry, having the potential for Smith winning might help him. He could campaign against Smith federally in a regard and not just Polyev. I think Smith is going to be easier to campaign against. The alternative, having the election after Alberta's, is Smith will likely win in a vacuum. If the feds do nothing differently right now, Smith should win still. I'll get into an update on Alberta maybe next week or the week after, depending on polls. There's been one, so I'm it's on the radar, but we'll see timetables. But Smith should win, barring anything the feds do, campaign-wise. So if the election is after Smith is elected, Trudeau might prefer that because it might make Albertans... might suppress Albertan federal turnout, and they might be able to eke out some closed seats in Calgary and Edmonton. I'm skeptical about that idea, but I think it is a possibility. Low, but conceivable. Now, I think the before the 29th is a more likely result, or possibly the same day, but the same day is sketchy. Because then you're, she, he's probably going to just cause Pauly of and Smith to blow out Alberta in that regard, because they would both be supercharging each other, probably. Well, more like Quali will probably supercharge Smith if the election is on the same day. Because uh, there's a lot of people in Alberta who are going to turn out to vote for Polyev. And if they're also turning out to vote for Provincial at the same time, they'll just vote down ballot, likely. Not guaranteed, but it's very possible. The other alternative timetable would be sometime in the fall. Now, the reason why Trudeau might go for the fall over spring is if he's expecting the economy to meaningfully recover within a year. Things will be meaningfully recovered by the fall. He might be able to jump on Pualia before he has a chance to pivot to a new talking point. The concern with doing an early election in the spring for Trudeau would be the economy talking point that Pualia has been nailing for ever, basically, is right now. All of those issues are happening right now. Inflation, weak GDP growth, housing... Healthcare, all these things are happening right now, and while he was hitting all of them, he's punching them in the face. So, doing an election right now would be very risky for Trudeau. I don't think it's entirely impossible. I don't think it's very likely, though, as much as I want it to happen. So, sometimes if you watch me on follow me on Twitter, you might, might seem like I think it's very likely to happen. I, I just want to be clear I don't think it's very likely to happen. I just really want it to happen. <laughs> Not even necessarily because I want Polly up to win. I just want an election because I get more traffic. <laughs> Big poll. Anyways. Um, the fall 
if there was, if there has to be an election this year, if Trudeau's dead set on it, the fall seems more likely because it's very possible that if the central bank has handled its cards correctly, which is a big if, we will likely be looking at a much lower real inflation rate or increase of inflation rate come the fall. Right now, we're in the low sixes, I believe, and with uh, the prime rate being 4.5%, I think it's pretty reasonable that we might see month-over-month inflation decrease to maybe 5% range within this year. Barring any external circumstances or decisions from Trudeau, like fiscal policy decisions. But it's conceivable. That's the main main thing, that it could fall down. And if that's falling down, and at the same time we are not entering a recession, then I think he might have a case to be made that the economy is being fixed. And if Paulie have looked like he's weakened, he might jump on it. But again, I don't think it's very likely. There's a lot of talk. I mean, there's also people like Tom Mulcair saying it's going to happen. The Liberals nominating candidates, stuff like that, are signs. I don't think we should discount it. It is always possible, either because the NDP might decide, oh, wow, we're going to lose a lot of seats. Or it could be a case of Trudeau thinks Pauly is weak. The most recent ledger poll, if more polls agree with this, that is 34-34, that would be reason enough for Trudeau to try it. Because a 34-34 tie should give him a minority government. Like, if that was the actual result, he should win easily. He might even get a majority. It was a 34-34 tie. Keep in mind, in 2019, at a 33-7, 32-6 result... Trudeau was 10 seats short of majority. If he gained one and a quarter points, one and a half points nationally, and the Conservatives only gained 0.3, he could very well pick up 10 seats. That's well within the possibility. I can't necessarily name you the 10 seats they could pick up, but I would assume they'd likely be, be out west. Likely. But it's hard to predict that in the model. I guess I could do a hypothetical scenario, but I don't have that data right now. There might be some in uh, Quebec too, depending on where the votes are. But the point is, if that's what the liberal internal polling looks like, this is extremely likely. And the reason it would be extremely likely if Trudeau's internal polling says it's extremely close in popular vote that he would go for it, is because the last two elections, the conservative incumbent got removed when they lost. Scheer was basically forced to resign, and O'Toole was cooed. Good. But the risk with that, naturally, is in 2019, or sorry, 2021, when he called the early election, he was leading by about eight, and O'Toole... Managed to close the gap. Brian on uh, Brigant, 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 whatever. I can't pronounce his last name at all. But you know what I mean. Uh, he, the guy runs too close to call. On Twitter, he has data from the Canadian Election Survey 2021. Where he's pretty much sussed out that there was gains by the Conservatives, but it wasn't as much as the polls suggested, which... If you follow my model, that's kind of what I said, too. I don't have the raw data with me here, but if you go back to my model results for, uh, like, let's say June 2021, I never had the Liberals that high and the Conservatives that low. But, this is a big but here. There is 
there is reason to believe if you're Trudeau, based on the current polling, such as Ledger, that even if the Conservatives gain ground, it might not actually t- hurt liberal seat count that much. Yes, there's a few vulnerable ridings in Atlantic Canada, but most of the places where the Conservatives are gaining ground are rural. Most of the ground gained, probably as ground gained, is rural ridings. He's actually increased conservative vote share in rural areas by about 12 percentage points. And that has actually led to lots of seat flips, notably from the NDP. The catch here, though, is that for the Liberals, they only really need to retain... The GTA. Now, well, not just the GTA, but they really only need to retain their urban ridings and a few in Quebec and a few in Atlantic Canada, and then they're fine. Most people losing seats from the conservative gains right now are the NDP. If Trudeau can pull out... Let's say hypothetically, right now, Trudeau could get 10 more seats based on his internal polling. He might go for an election. Because he would likely still win in a worst case scenario. And in a best case scenario, he wins and Poiliev is forced out. Why is that a big deal for the liberals? Well... There's really not any big names in the Conservative Party to replace him, Poiliev. Most people who could replace Poiliev are very similar to Poiliev. Now, that doesn't say there's none, and as we've seen in the last two Conservative leadership races... People who have almost, who are effectively nobodies in the caucus, or no, like, that, nobody's the wrong word, it's too, too harsh. But people who have very little notoriety came in and ran good campaigns. You had, that gained quite a bit of ground. Leslie Lewis, Derek Sloan, Roman Babber. People with very, very, very little public notoriety could go in and do quite well in the conservative leadership race. So just because there's no obvious contenders now doesn't mean there is no one left. But the thing is, Poiliev is easily one of the most effective conservative communicators in Canada. So... The idea that Trudeau might be enticed in the idea to try to dethrone him. Now, at the same time, as I've just talked up why this might be a good idea for Trudeau, I will basically just say it's not going to happen. It's an enticing idea. It's an enticing gamble. But unlike Sheer, unlike O'Toole, Poiliev didn't barely win. Sheer won by like two points or something like that, and O'Toole by about 16, I think. That's what it was. Margin, that is. Over McKay. Poiliev won by like a 50-point margin. Actually, it might have more than that. Doesn't matter. He blew it out the water. Almost... The- As close to unanimous as you can get with six people running. So unlike Sheer, you don't have a very unstable foundation from a leader who probably became prime minister before he was ready. Or not prime minister, the leader of the party before he was ready. And unlike O'Toole, he doesn't 
he hasn't completely betrayed the people he campaigned for. O'Toole campaigned for the voting bloc Polyev won and then betrayed them. Polyev hasn't. So whereas O'Toole was extremely vulnerable to a palace coup because he angered all of the MPs that supported him and all the SOCONs because he was extremely not that. And his election campaign ultimately flopped and did worse than Shears did. And he didn't embrace the convoy, as just many things. He was vulnerable to palace coup. Polyev, though, unless he loses seats, shouldn't be. So there's all sorts of hypothetical reasons or ideas that the liberals might want to do an election. And I think it's very accurate to say they want to be really ready for an election. Most presently because an election could happen any time. Maybe one day Singh will grow tired of losing his base. Or losing his seats, at least. And start trying to campaign differently instead of just being liberals plus. That said, we will see. But regardless of that, the idea that Trudeau would risk an election in this calendar year Seems crazy to me with the current economy situation now. I think his best bet at an early election would have been last fall. Right as Polyev got the leadership before he could get organized. But the polling was way too pro Polyev at the time, so he didn't do it. Which is probably a good idea. Now, <clears throat> I think the only likelihood of an actual election outside of hopium is if the economy recovers for next year and i mean meaningfully recovers inflation has to be close back to two percent per capita gdp growth has to be above inflation or at least up around two percent kind of range People have to feel like they are making progress forward. If the housing market could be reducing or continue to be deflating, that'd be great too. If rents could go down, or at least relative to inflation, that'd be great too. If that happens, Trudeau might go for it and be like, we fixed the economy as his campaign pitch. And that would disarm a lot of Polyev's current talking points but at the end of the day me speculating on what's going to happen effectively two years from now it's kind of silly you can't really do it an election could happen at any point but this is a big but it's not very likely this year it's not very likely next year I was putting money on it. I think you'll lay it out. It seems to me... Unless Trudeau is a bigger gambler than I anticipate him to be... He will likely ride out to 2025... Just so he can say he finished two terms... If he loses... And there's other reasons why he might want to wait too. As I said, the economy will probably only get better from here. But predicting the future is largely pointless. Predicting politicians is even more futile because they don't ever do anything you want them to do. So next time you come across people speculating about an election this year, you can engage with it in uh, the hypothetical or the hopium side of it, but don't actually expect it's going to happen. It's probably not. I know. I'm sad too.
But with that, if you liked the video, by all means, like, share, subscribe, comment below what you think. If you think there's going to be an election this year, mm -hmm. if you disagree with anything, if you see any mistakes to be made, because sometimes I have made mistakes on stuff I know, uh, what is it, last in December, I made a mistake where I forgot to label Elizabeth May as the Green Party leader, which caused her to actually win her seat again. So, there, there does happen. So, if you see anything, let me know. It does happen. But otherwise, I bid you all adieu, and I will see you next week with either Alberta or continuation of understanding politics, depending on polls.